Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on my 2015 Ram 6.4 liter gas engine. We're gonna be changing the spark plugs and we're doing that with... Now, these spark plugs are a little bit different, uh, that being that they last for about 100,000 miles. I'm at about 110,000 miles on my truck and I started to notice my gas mileage uh, decreasing a little bit over time and then it got really bad. Well, that turned out it just needed a new transmission. But uh, I still think that this is gonna help. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, give these a try. All right, now let's talk about the tools that I'm using. So the first thing that I wanna cover uh, to get those coil packs off, I'm gonna be using uh, a couple 10 millimeter sockets. This is a deep socket, the shallow socket. I'm gonna be doing this with a quarter inch ratchet. The reason is, because look how small that thing is. I can get right back up in there under that firewall. I can do exactly what I need to do. Now for some of those areas, I might need this little shallow socket. So I'm gonna have that available as well. For the spark plugs themselves, this gets a little different, right? So I have this, which I highly recommend for anybody doing spark plugs of any kind. Um, I picked this up working on my Volkswagens and this is awesome. So it's got a swivel head here. Okay, it's just a standard 5 eighths, but it's magnetic. So um, it really holds, right? Let's see, holds that in there, right? So it really holds on to that spark plug. Um, it's got a nice little, I don't know if you can see it inside there, but it's got a nice little um, insulated area to keep from breaking that porcelain. I can get on that with another wobble extension, which I really like. So I have a little stubby wobble extension um, I also have a universal joint here, so uh, I can get back up in those areas and I can almost be turning, you know, at 90 degrees. So I really like this. Now, um, you never know. I just recommend a regular, you know, two, three, four inch extension. Um, again, you can extend these out with a wobble extension on the end. And uh, those wobble extensions are, are really handy. So you can see how that wobble extension works. Add that to a universal joint and you've got a whole bunch of free range movement. Now, some other specialty tools that I recommend. Uh, these are just these little um, spark plug installers. You can do this with some 3 8 inch uh, fuel line or, uh, you know, water hose or tubing or whatever. And, um, but these are a little more rigid. Okay, uh, they are also sealed on the back end. So they give you just a little bit of that, that vacuum, you know, hanging on to that as well. So I've got a short one, I've got a long one. These do have a little bit of, of free range movement that you can turn, you know, and make these work. Uh, if you wanna get really fancy, you got this guy here, right? This guy bends in all kinds of weird shapes. Okay, you turn this handle here and it spins your spark plug here. So the spark plug, will stick in there and you know hold itself in place and you can do that. So what I like to use these for is I will actually come in and break this loose and if I can't pull that out of that cylinder on these Hemi engines, you know, those spark plugs are pretty deep down in there. So if I can't pull that out, then I will use one of these and I'll stick it down in there, push it onto the spark plug itself and it grips around the porcelain and then I can pull that out. Um, I really like using this or these instead of right a socket or something like this for installation because I've got a lot more leverage on here and I can really cross thread some uh, some spark plugs in a hurry. So I like to use something like this because I can be a little more precise and uh, before I start to actually cross thread and mess up any threads in the cylinder um, or in the head, I can, you know, feel what's going on and it's going to start to slip and then I can back that out and start over. So something to keep in mind. So now before I start replacing all my, putting all my plugs in, I'm going to go through and I'm going to empty out all the ones that I just bought and uh, I'm going to make sure that they're gapped at 44,000. So this one here, whenever I open it up, I can see I'm at 40. There we go. I was about 40 thousandths on that one. So um, sometimes they get dropped in the package, they get banged down. Uh, I dropped mine from probably about six feet of height and accidentally fell off the shelf. Uh, so you just wanna make sure that those are all uh, checked out. And you can see there is a slight difference between this Bosch plug and the NGK. So the porcelain on this one is, and the insulator is actually just a little bit lower than what it is on here. Uh, I don't know if it makes a difference, but uh, we're gonna try this one out. Now 
now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and we're going to pull off those, uh, those coil packs. So looking down in here, you can actually see where we need to get to, right? So these are our coil packs on these now. Um, we need to remove each of these and there's going to be two boots that go down in the cylinder head. So there's going to be two boots here and we're going to pull those out and then replace the two spark plugs that are in there. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is carefully pull up. I don't know if you can see how I did that. I just pulled up with my fingernail, right? And that's the plug right oh. there. So once we get this pulled up here, there's a little indentation right there in the middle. We're going to squeeze that and then that should come right up. Right, and I'm going to do mine one at a time just to keep everything in order. You could come in, you could pull all these off. Um, I don't really think it would matter if you switch out the coil packs, but I like to put everything back in the way that it came. Um, so I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to pull these two off, and this is going to be the same all the way around it. The only difference is, is on this side, it's really easy to get to. Let me show you the other side. Right now, here's the other side. So right here, I've got some AC lines in the way. Uh, I can still reach everything. Back, way back over there, I've got, you know, those coil packs. So up underneath that firewall. Um, you know, it might, it might get a little interesting back up in there, but we're gonna make it happen, so. All right, so now we've got that removed and here we are with that little, you know, quarter inch ratchet. Let me pull that out. Get down here. So there's gonna be two bolts for each one. And those bolts don't pull all the way out. They're held in there in the housing. So you can see how I'm just untwisting this. It'll get to the point to where you'll feel it. It'll come out and it's not biting on any threads anymore. So now it's just wobbly. So now this whole thing will just pull out and we do that slowly. Nice little wiggle motion because we've got these boots on there and I don't want to tear any of them. So we're just going to take our time. All right, so we slowly pull those out. We're going to inspect these boots. Now they do sell they do sell replacement boots for these. So if you did tear one, you could buy a new boot. They also sell these new coil packs about 20, 25 bucks each. Um, so it's not the end of the world if you tear one. It's just if I don't have to replace, you know, eight more things at $25, I'm gonna be a happy man. So let's go ahead now, let's get down in there and let's pull those spark plugs out and take a look at them. Now, the hardest part when working on these is finding leverage. So you can see, I actually had to go get a longer extension. Now, when you're removing these, don't, don't get too scared about trying to get creative. You know, to get these off, it, it takes what it takes. If your truck's like mine, I mean, this thing's, what, seven years old? Oops, lost that right. It goes to the bottom. Right, so my truck's a good seven years old, 100 and... I think we're at 112,000 miles right now. So some of these things, even if they use anti-seize or uh, any of that stuff, they're still going to be tough. All right. So I don't think I'm gonna need that special tool right now to pull this one out. I think I can get it. You just wait until the resistance changes. So right there. There we go. All right, so we got that spark plug out. Let's go ahead and let's get our next one out. You just feel those threads. I'm gonna make sure and get some antices on there. And there we go. All right, so that first cylinder is finished. 
Um, the next part that I want to cover is how to make sure that we don't have any, uh, you know, binding or anything on our threads the next time we try to replace these in 100,000 miles. So this stuff here that I have, this is a uh, This This is some nasty stuff. So um, look, I, I don't even know how this happens. You end up with it on your nose, all over the place. I mean, you just can't get rid of it, but it's a necessary evil, right? So I just like to take just a little bit of this here and then I just go down one side of the threads here. You can see, okay. And then that goes down in the cylinder. Um, you could spread this all the way around if you wanted, but I find that this, it's gonna spread itself out as it's screwing in. Um, so I like to do that there with those. All right, I'm gonna stick it in here just so it's ready to go and I'm not getting that crap everywhere. And one more thing I recommend, either some silicone spray or I like this dielectric grease here. Um, I just take this, right, and I just give it a little squirt right there in the opening. Not a lot. You just wanted to keep moisture and uh, anything like that that's going to lead to some corrosion. You just want to, you know, get that in there. You could, because these all seal right here, you could give it a little squirt around there. You know what I mean? You can spread that out with your finger, um, however you want to get that, that thin line of uh, basically just a moisture barrier and just a little bit extra sealant. It doesn't harden, it doesn't do anything. Um, all that it does is it keeps moisture from creeping in there and keeping these boots from sticking. Right, keep your rag handy, get all that crap off. Okay, and uh, we're ready to install. Now, to install these, I'm just gonna use this little contraption here. You can see how that works, right? So I twist it here and it spins it there. So uh, that should keep me from binding. That should allow me to get that in there uh, without, you know, cross threading anything. All right, remember we do got that antices on there. So you wanna make sure that you're not you know, getting that stuff, hitting everything with it, because I can assure you, you're going to find it. All right, so once you find the hole, just twist this until I can feel it stop, stop spinning. That way I'm finger tight. There we go. So now pull that off. Now I'm ready to get on it with my ratchet. You could look up the torque specs on these and I encourage you to do so. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. I just do this until it's snug and that's good for me. All right, got my second one. Again, this is a really handy tool. You can find this down in my description. There will be a link there. And remember any of those links you click on and buy stuff through, uh, you know, helps out this channel. And I always appreciate it. Just want to give it a push you'll feel it go down in there and these boots they're not like the old school you know plug wires and things like that that actually like clicked and and you know crimp down around the tip of that spark plug um these ones are like i think they're like spring loaded so they're just a little bit long and when you push this down over there um those hit and uh, make that connection And again, that stuff there, snug, right? I'm sure there's torque specs, but I'm just gonna snug it up. All right, push that down until it clicks. Make sure you put your little safety catch down right there, and we're done. All right, so we have that uh, that first one finished. I just gotta do that seven more times. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, if you break it down, 
let's be honest let's say it takes you 15 20 minutes for each one right it's 160 minutes that's going to be close to uh it's going to be close to three hours which if you had to get this quoted um i believe the last time i asked ram about it they told me that they could do it for like between five and six hundred dollars um it's not too bad considering spark plugs are 200 so you're looking at maybe uh three to four hundred dollars in labor which if their shop rate wherever you're at ours is about 120 130 dollars an hour uh you know that, that comes out that's that's about what it is so um that's just something to keep in mind so i'm gonna go through uh maybe I don't, I don't know through some editing magic show you what it's like to do some of those other harder ones on the other side but um i'm not gonna film this whole thing and make you watch it so if this is helpful to you and you like it make sure that you uh you know hit that like button and uh this channel is more you know it's an outdoor diy i do a lot of adventure stuff too a lot of fishing um hiking and traveling and road trips and all that other stuff so if that's up your alley make sure that you subscribe if you haven't done so uh so uh enjoy the rest of this footage and uh thanks for watching i'll catch you all in the next video all right just a trick for oops trick for this back one is i just unconnected this little hose clamp back here and i'll pull these two hoses just up and out of the way just kind of wedge them you know where you can like so i got those up and out of the way i'm gonna take that just twist that i want to see just give you a better idea so pull those hoses out and then this all right that's what held the hoses and it's right in front of that coil pack right there i don't know if you can see it right there Right, so now that fully exposes everything. And a person could do those first, but I recommend doing the other ones first. That way you know what everything feels like when you can't see it. Again, I absolutely love this thing. All right, you see that? Oops, I lost it, but let's get it back up there. All right? I'm just twisting this right here. That's it. And it's tightening that that spark plug in there. It's worth their weight in gold. Not too expensive either, like 10, 15 bucks. But the amount of time it saves you, because I can get that right snug. That way when I get in there with the ratchet, it's just ready to, you know, tighten up. Now, just a comparison between the two. All right, we got this guy. The only difference is now my hand's down there. So, I guess if I couldn't reach it with my hand, this the other one would be better. But this one's just as good. All right, once you get it finger tight, there you go. So everybody will always worries about this far one, but look how I have my extension. All right, it's almost straight through. So I've gone through here now and I uh, got all those replaced, went and drove it, everything drove fine, no check engine lights or anything. Um, I did do a little research and found that some come with the Bosch um, Iridium just straight from the factory and some come with the NGK. Uh, I went with NGK, I really like NGK. Um, 
And, you know, they had really good reviews with, you know, all the different Dodge Ram forums and all that other stuff in the 6.4. So, uh, if you're familiar with the Bosch, you know, or, and you like Bosch, I, as long as, as long as you've got this, this seal, this little ring right here, uh, and it's within specs, right? I would say go for it, but a hundred thousand miles, you know, a hundred thousand miles is a long time on a plug. Uh, you can see these ones here are the worst ones. They came off that driver's side back, uh, cylinder. You can actually see that there's like some oil seepage and stuff that was going down in here. These were not very tight. I think what happened was, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to get back in there and they just weren't tightened up. These could be aftermarket plugs that somebody else put in and maybe they, you know, didn't get them as tight as they should have. Uh, but some of that oil, that's just top oil seepage comes from the valve cover, comes from, uh, spilling whenever you're filling your, your oil and doing an oil change. So, um, one thing that I did was I kept two of the best ones and I'm going to put them in this box and these will just stay in my, um, you know, my toolbox back there. And so this will be something that I just always have a spare for. I do that because my last truck that I had, it was a 2003 three quarter ton, but it was the five seven. And, um, I had changed all my plugs before we went on a big vacation, you know, three, 4,000 miles. And, um, we were in the middle of Utah and it decided to eat an exhaust valve seat for the third cylinder. And so what happened was when it ate that valve seat, um, I was able to swap out the plugs that were missing. And even though, cause the other plugs were just destroyed by all that shrapnel and everything going through it. Uh, what it allowed me to do was continue to drive on. Cause that was, a uh, about Beaver, Utah, where I was, and I drove it into Vegas and literally limped it into the dealership and said, hey, I want to trade this thing in. I want to buy another truck. <laughs> I bought another truck on the last leg home of our vacation. And uh, yeah, anyway, what I was able to do was uh, even though those other plugs were destroyed, I could put my old plugs back in it and it would at least fire in the cylinder, even though there wasn't any compression or anything, it would at least fire and, and you know burn up some of that gas. Otherwise, what happens is your cylinder you know, you, you just, it just gets wet and it'll seep down into your oil and then uh, you can end up throwing a rod bearing, uh, spinning a rod bearing or, uh, you know, causing some other damage. So anyway, there's that. If I missed anything, throw it in the comments. Um, if it was helpful, again, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if this is your sort of thing that you're into. And uh, as always, I'll catch you on the next video.